Hello everyone and welcome back to another kind of deity profile for the Voyager's Guide to Ravion. Uh, this time we're actually going to cover the second to last god within the pantheon for Ravion. We're almost done. Uh, the Twilight Huntress. The Twilight Huntress is a chaotic evil goddess serving as the personification of the terrors of night. She is a dangerous and unpredictable force within the pantheon, commonly valued as an accessory to the traditional forces of death and destruction. The Twilight Huntress is a goddess most commonly associated with and depicted as a sort of reaper of souls. She is depicted as a pale woman with long dark hair with pointed feathery wings wielding a silver sword. She is usually depicted as riding a chariot of dark metal with two black stallions at the reins with burning cinder eyes in accordance with the legends about her. The Twilight Huntress is a goddess that was said to ride through the night slaying those who strayed too far from the safety of their firelight. The Twilight Huntress is a goddess bent on the ideals of survival of the fittest. The people that follow her are also very focused on the mentality of survival of the fittest. And this means that the Twilight Huntress is a goddess focused on the harvest of the souls of the weak. Her ideals are focused and aligned towards, getting ri uh, towards ridding the world of the weakness that only the strong might remain to test their power over and over again. The Twilight Huntress is a goddess with kind of limited popularity outside of murderers and fanatics and other than those who work to better themselves and become strong she has a set of ideals that her followers tend to adhere to and the vast majority is otherwise restricted as a cult following these ideals are typically focused around being the strong that hunts and kills the weak but her official tenets are the weak are meant to be hunted down there must only be strength remaining Will to kill is needed to cleanse the world of weakness. So, her holy symbol is a bow, but she wields a sword. That's a little bit weird, right? Well, the Twilight Huntress is, as the best way to describe her, uh, digging into her a bit more, is she's the goddess of the night that in the old days, before the planes were separated, basically rode around in this chariot with a bow and a sword and she would ride around from anyone that strayed too far from the firelight and cut them down with her sword her bow is just there for good measure to make sure no one gets away and that's part of why it's her holy symbol no one escapes the weakness no one escapes her followers if they actually want to take you down so the Twilight Huntress kind of stands in a really stark opposition to the Bonfire Guard. Whereas the Bonfire Guard sits by the fire and watches the edge of the firelight to protect people from the horrors of the night, the Twilight Huntress just is the horrors of the night. She waits out the outside of the firelight, riding around in her chariot just outside of sight, so that the minute you leave the protection of that firelight, she can take you out. And the whole point of it is, if you walk through the dark, if you leave the protection of the firelight, you're in danger, and you'd better be strong. Because if you are not strong enough, she and her followers are happy to make sure that you are not a part of the weakness that they feel so plagues the earth. You have to not be asking for it, for her to come and try to take you out, but you have to knowingly leave the protection that the world of you know civilized people tends to afford you so it's it's not necessarily asking for trouble but it's stuff like i'm walking on the main road and i turn down a dark alley you know i what, what do you think is in the dark alley waiting for you you have to be aware that this is a risk so the twilight huntress being extremely dangerous is kind of the patron goddess of murderers and and people that otherwise walk the night similar to uh the shadow stalker they she is not as picky as as needing refinement however uh really all that she wants is for her followers to make sure that only the strong remain and that's similar to the shadow stalker but the shadow stalker needs there to be some sort of a reward or a code she just kills for the sake of it for the sake of now everyone's stronger and that tends to be what she wants 
So it's a little bit harder to work with this goddess because she's like, I'll I'll kill everyone, you know? I'll I'll uh make sure that everybody is along the lines of the strength that she thinks that everyone needs to exemplify in the world. So that being said, I, I would not recommend uh, following the Twilight Huntress unless you're willing to go into kind of a, a darker side of things. You know, you have to be willing to delve into the kill or be killed mentality, uh, which doesn't lend itself necessarily to a, a heroic campaign. So it'll depend if you're going to run a cleric or a paladin of the Twilight Huntress, uh, exactly how do you address the fact that she really just wants you to prove that you're the strongest and how do you follow that while also maintaining a relationship with a group of party members so either way let me know how you think you might end up working with something like this if you were to make a cleric or a paladin how are you going to exemplify this worship of this goddess while still maintaining these interpersonal relationships with what was most likely going to be a weaker party in the eyes of this goddess so either way thank you for watching remember it doesn't take much to uh, make a difference out there so be the difference that you want to see and i will see you all in the next video bye